All right, good afternoon and welcome. Thank you for joining me today. My name is Lynette Willis and I'm a Senior Account Manager here at Nexternal. Today I'm going to be sharing with you the details of Nexternal's recently released quoting feature, which is already available in the system. In short, this is a customer-friendly interface that allows you to accept requests for quotes through your store, to provide those quotes, and easily convert them then into active orders. This is a really fantastic feature for companies that are using Nexternal for their business-to-business -business orders because sometimes quotes are needed in writing before a purchase can be authorized, or perhaps you offer non-advertised pricing for bulk purchases, or you don't even post your pricing at all for some or all of your products. It's also extremely useful for companies with highly customizable products, products in which it's difficult to give an accurate estimate online for every possible combination. So there are many uses for this quoting tool. Today's format, we're going to stick to roughly 15 minutes. I'm going to cover a few potential scenarios where this feature might be useful to your business. We'll see what the customer experience physically looks like in the store and the process flow for the customer and for you as well. And then we'll go into the back end of the system and see the configuration, what that looks like under the hood. And then if there's some time for questions at the end, I will do my best to answer them. So let's move right forward and see what this looks like. Okay, so here we go. We are at your store and you are a manufacturer of high-end customizable corporate gifts. And we are shopping today as Betty Davis and we're already logged in. Betty, Betty is one of your best customers because she runs an event planning business and she often has a need for your products. She has a golf event coming up and so she is eyeing this hot red shirt. She knows from working with you in the past that you might give her a better price than her wholesale price if she buys in bulk. So all she has to do is ask you for an estimate. So I'm going to add those items to cart and click on checkout, just like she would normally shop. And then here we are at her checkout screen. So she has an option here to have a request for quote through the store. Not everybody has this, but since she's a wholesale customer and you have this set up for wholesale customers, she can use it. So here she submits the order. And with that, the order is already in. I'm going to refresh this page here. So now you can see that the order is in there and it sticks out immediately. You have a new status. It's pending status and this is fantastic because it can't be confused by your staff. Not only does it stick out um, visually, but uh, pending orders cannot be processed. So the, the features are actually disabled for credit card processing and for shipping, so it can't possibly um, happen. Okay, so when she submitted the order, you received a notification email saying somebody requested a bid, requested a quote, so come into the store and you know you need to give them one. So you're going to come to the orders section and click on edit for that order. and then you're just going to modify it. So what you can either do is put in a customer discount that applies to this order only, or you can overwrite it on the line item level, which this is a powerful thing to be able to do because sometimes you have multiple line items within an order and you don't want to give the same discount across the board. So we're going to overwrite it on the line item level to $40. And then we're going to write a little note to her. Betty, I overrode the price. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm not going to say overrode the price. <laughs> I extended a 20% 20, 20 discount for these shirts. Good luck. Let's see if I can type today on your event. Click finish. Okay, and now what we need to do is we need to let her know that we've got the quote ready. So we're going to click on customer emails to send her a pre-formatted email. And we're going to click on the 
update email. Let her know that there's an update and click send email. So now let's see what that looks like. I happen to have access to Betty's inbox. Okay, so here you can see there's my little note. There's what she ordered. It's perfectly clear. The quantity, the price, she can see everything she needs to know about this. There's also a note that says you can edit, activate, or cancel this quote at any time by visiting your quote page. So she's going to click that link and it's going to take her right back into the store, into the My Account section. Of course, for security, she does need to log in again. So immediately, <clears throat> excuse me, immediately she can see the important details repeated. Now all she has to do is activate it. So she would go up here to quote actions and click on activation, but if you notice it says not available, please edit payment information. She does need to pay, it's not for free. So she's going to click on edit payment information. The, the appropriate link is just below. And since she shops with you so often, of course she has a saved credit card on file. She wants to use that. It's very easy and then all she needs to do is click activate quote. Gives her a little warning and she can activate it. So now let's visit back to the order management system and see what that has done to the order. I'm going to refresh this page. And now you can see there's the order with unshipped status. It blends in right along all, alongside all the other orders. It's ready to be processed. It can be processed now. Okay, so that's very cool. Very simple. Nothing ever had to be retyped into a third-party system. So the door to data entry hours, uh, errors rather, remains closed. And there's perfect clarity, clarity about what the customer wanted because she put it in her own shopping cart. Okay. Now let me show you a second scenario. And in this case, there is no online request for quote, but you do still need to provide a quote. In this scenario, your sales rep has met with Betty's Crosstown event planning rival, none other than Eve Harrington. And Eve is also planning an event, but she wants a quote first before she buys something. So your rep comes back to the office and starts to create an order for her just like he would for any other order. Pulls up her account, clicks create order or whatever process you normally go through to create an internal order. And Eve has a beach picnic event that she's planning and your rep showed her that you've got these amazing beach totes with some great functional pockets there we go, add to cart. They've got a contrasting silk lining that is just designer fabric, but it's somehow magically also stain proof. We're going to click on checkout. Okay, here we are at the final checkout screen. Now, you need to do two things differently on this screen, or rather, you need to do two things in the payment information section. You need to indicate that this is a quote. You do not want it processed. You want it to be a pending order when it comes into the system. That's what that does. And then you need to provide a payment method for when the order becomes active. Now, of course, once the customer receives the quote, she can still change saved card on file. It's already right there. She's likely going to use that, or maybe you even discussed it. Rather, your rep even discussed it with her. Okay, so he selects that and go down to the bottom of the screen. He does not want to send the order confirmation email yet, so he's going to uncheck that box because he still has to modify the price. He doesn't want to give her this pricing. So he submits the order to just get it into the system. And here it is, also with the pending status. Now he can edit it. So in this case, we are going to apply 
instead of override uh, the price on the line item, we're just going to apply a 15% discount. You could, of course, add the note there as we did before. Okay, now we have put together the quote. Did I click finish? Let's try that again. I don't think I clicked finish. There we go. Okay, now we've put together the quote. And so now we need to let her know. We gotta send it to her. Click on customer emails. And this time, rather than sending an update email, because she has received no other emails at this point, we're sending her a pending confirmation email. Click send email. Gives you a little message. And there it goes. Okay. So now, she receives a similar email to what Eve received. She can also click on the link, go into the system, activate the order, just like Eve did. Or, since she's a little bit more of a social butterfly, she prefers to call you on the phone and have a quick chat. She calls you. She says, it looks great. I'm so excited. I saw it on my cell phone. Please put this on my credit card. I'm pumped. So all you have to do is change it from pending to active. And there we go. It is unshipped status. It looks like the rest. It's ready to be processed. So now let's talk about how this whole thing works. What is the setup like? Okay, you may have noticed that there are two key components to this quoting feature. One of them is the request for quote, which is a billing option. The other one is the pending order, which is an order status. It's an order preference. So these two work together to give you the whole quoting feature as we've just seen it. I'm going to show you how to set them both up and we are just going to work with the request for quote option first. So to configure this, you go to settings, boolean options, I'm sorry, settings, billing options in your system and you're going to make a custom payment method. This is what that section looks like. What you need to fill in first are these labels here. You need to fill in request for quote or whatever you want. This is just how it's going to be referred to on the final checkout screen when your customers see it. Rank. This allows you to limit which customers can see this request for quote option at checkout. Maybe you want to limit it to your wholesale customers or a subset of wholesale customers. In this case, we set it for wholesale customers, which are rank 10. And if you don't know what the rank of your customers is, you can go to customers, customer types, and your order management system. And whatever you put in this box, it's going to be that rank and above that has access to this option. Next, you are going to definitely, definitely check this box for pending orders only. This is what helps protect you. Um, you don't want requests for quotes, which are just requests, coming in as active live orders. You want them to be pending and you want them to be treated as such. So do check this box. Once you do that, you are halfway finished. So next, what you're going to do is configure the pending order options. That's in Orders, Preferences, and this is what that section looks like. And it does look like quite a lot of things to fill in, but fortunately, you can ignore a lot of it. You can ignore all these things because this section of Nexternal actually is for two Nexternal features and um, the other one we're not going to talk about today. So this is just talking about the one feature of the quoting feature. To set that up, you need to worry about these fields. This is the first section. Singular and plural label. This is just what, this, what you want the option called when your customers see it in their emails and when they come back into their store in the My Account section, this label will be there. The pending order checkbox. 
We have this set for OMS only. Uh, for quotes, it doesn't really make sense to me to do it for customers of a certain rank because you don't want customers to be able to set up their own pending orders. Um, for, so for this quoting feature, I suggest doing this OMS only. That means only your staff, only you, can create a pending order. So users who are administrator, editor, or power user. Allow edit and allow activate. So this is asking, for, for allow edit, this is asking whether or not you want your customers to be able to edit a pending order. I suggest leaving this unchecked because if you've already given someone a quote, um, it could be based on the quantity that they have in their cart. You don't want them to modify that. Allow activate allows the customer to just activate their own pending order. Uh, otherwise, they would need to call you and, and you would have to do the drop down method that we uh, demonstrated earlier. Finally, this is an option auto cancel interval. Um, this allows you to set an expiration date for your pending orders. Maybe they're only good for 10 days and then a customer has to get another bid. It allows you to limit that. So once you do that, you are finished with the setup. Setup is totally done. So as you can see, it's just two little areas. Pretty simple. All right, there are a few other miscellaneous items that I would like to talk about. Number one, quickly, pending orders can't be processed. They have to change to add a stack to at active status first. So don't worry about a request being accidentally shipped or charged. It has to be activated. Number two, inventory is not decremented until pending orders become active. So if you're using Nexternal and you have the inventory control feature on, there's no inventory check that's going to take place, first of all, when someone uh, creates a request for quote. And it's not going to also come out of inventory until the order becomes active. Number three, if you're authorizing credit cards at the time that customers place orders, that will not take place when someone's requesting a quote. That won't happen until a pending order also becomes active. That's the first attempt against the credit card. So one other little bonus thing, and this is related to notification emails. So typically your notification emails are the ones that notify you of the pending order. Or I'm sorry, of the request for quote. Your primary and secondary contacts are going to receive these emails. If you are using Nexternal for, um, with sales reps, if you have sales reps who are logged into the order management system and they're assigned to particular accounts as the account owners, you can make sure that they're empowered to manage these requests for quotes um, by receiving these email notifications themselves. And you would set them up by going to settings, Boolean options, notification enforce owner. That makes sure that they are copied on the notification emails of the request for quote and not the secondary contacts in your system. The primary contact will, have, of course, still get copies of everything. And that is it. If you have any questions, please type them in.